One thing I need to point out is that we are currently higher than the peak of the 1929 stock market before it crashed and brought us the Great Depression. The P.E. ratio is the price of a share of stock divided by the earnings per share. So it's uh, the earnings that the company makes in a year divided by the number of shares that are out there. And you should be paying uh, a certain multiple of earnings when you're buying a stock, but you don't want to be paying a crazy multiple. This is one of the best valuations that investors have been able to use to judge whether they're buying an overvalued or an undervalued stock. And so fair value lies somewhere between a multiple of 10 to 15 times earnings. So that when the price is 10 to 15 times earnings, anything under 10 is considered undervalued. Down, when you get down to five, that's severely undervalued, a total bargain, and you should be buying that stock at, you know, just sell everything and buy. Uh, sell everything else and buy stocks. Uh, overvalued is 15 to 20, and after 20, you're in a bubble. And when you get up past uh, uh, 27 to 30, you're in a hyper bubble at that point. So uh, here's the information, and this goes all the way back to the year 1880. Now, the S&P actually only goes uh, back to 1950, but Dr. Robert Schiller took the 500 largest companies in America and calculated uh, the stock prices, the earnings, the dividend yields, and all of this stuff going back to 1880. And what this shows is that we went into a bubble, and you know, every time it exceeds this orange area and gets up into the red, that's a bubble. And um, we went into a bubble in 1901, and once the trend reverses, it doesn't stop. The bubble was 25.2, so the price that people were paying for a stock was 25 times the earnings. And remember, fair value is 10 to 15. Uh, once the trend reverses and that bubble pops, it doesn't stop until that uh, stock reaches severe undervaluation, and it bounces like a ball on the way down. It takes uh, the stairs down. A uh, bubble of uh, 32.6 in 1929, and with the stock market crash, it went down to severely undervalued. Bubble undervalued, bubble undervalued. So without exception, every time it got up into the red, before a new bull market would start that was a healthy, real bull market, it had to visit undervaluation. People had to give up on stocks. Stocks had to be basically the worst investment that you could ever make. That's when a brand new, healthy bull market starts is when everybody thinks that stocks are just uh, you know, a death wish if you're going to invest in them. Well, then we went into the biggest bubble in history in the year 2000 with the dot-com tech bubble of 44.2. This was astronomical. That means um, it's 40, you're paying 44 times the earnings, and even if they were to give you all of the earnings as dividends, you would have to wait 44 years to get your investment back. That's crazy. That's like your lifetime. Uh, then when that bubble popped, it went down to the border of overvalued to bubble, and it bounced with uh, all of the, uh, you know, Alan Greenspan took interest rates uh, from uh, over 5%, I can't remember, there were six something back then, down to one, and he held them there too long to get the stock markets back up, and he was successful. He got them back up to 27.6 in the years 2006 and 7, but he accidentally created a real estate bubble. The real estate bubble sort of came squirting out of here, just out of his peripheral vision. He didn't even know that he was creating one of the biggest bubbles in global history. Um, and then uh, when the global financial crisis hit and that bubble popped, Stocks only visited fair value. And then we created, we went from $0.8 trillion worth of base currency, that's how much of the paper dollars and the, uh, the currency that the Federal Reserve creates. Uh, there was 0 0.8, and they created another uh, 3.4 trillion, and we ended up with 4.2 trillion was the peak. Put it on, that, we put that 3.2, 3.4 on top of the 0 0.8. So the currency supply uh, was five times larger than it had been in 2008 during the, and that, I believe, is the reason that this bounce, this should be one of the bounces on the way down to severe undervaluation. Uh, that's what's caused this to be exaggerated, and I'll show, I'll, 
I'll prove that to you in a, in a moment. But I'm, so right now, uh, or earlier this year, we hit a peak of 33.3, .3, which again is insane valuation. These are hyper bubbles. Um, and I maintain that this is actually just another one of the bounces on the way down to severe undervaluation before a real bull market can start again. So one thing I need to point out is that we are currently higher than the peak of the 1929 stock market before it crashed and brought us the Great Depression. Another way of measuring stocks, and these, these are two of the most fundamental ways that investors have measured stocks for a century, uh, is dividend yields. Uh, if you own a stock and you pay a certain amount for that stock, what percentage of your investment do you get back into your trading account?